Welcome to the Praxology Podcast, where theology fuels the mission of the church. I am Sean Smith with Tyler Patty once more. Say hello, Tyler. Hello, hello. Waving to the camera. As, as am I. Join us today as we think biblically, reflect theologically, and act missionally. And today we're in a, in a New Year's mood. We've, we've taken off the Santa hats and, and the elf hats, and, and we're, we're in full-on New Year's mood today on the set, thinking about goals, or, or maybe maybe not. Maybe not. We'll, we'll, we'll explain what that means in a moment. Uh, to serve missionally and have a toolkit for success of the theme that we're in, we're asking, what does this time of year have to offer? What is it that New Year's is celebrating new things in, in, in the ending of old ones can do for us in, in spiritual life? Uh, we suggest maybe taking time to intentionally reflect on some goals. Um, and last year, we actually talked about resolutions mm. and setting resolutions. This year, we want to confuse ourselves. <laughs> Just make our jobs harder. <laughs> <laughs> and and we want to talk about not, not setting goals or reflecting on goals too much, but about actually embracing a gift of limits. So the gift of embracing human limitations as a New Year's resolution, or is that is that even a resolution? Maybe it's a counter resolution. That's what you've suggested. Yeah, yeah. Pre pre recording, I suggested maybe the word is counter resolution. So we'll go with we'll go with the idea of a counter resolution for for the the counter reformational movement, <laughs> and, and, or who knows what. Uh, but when to see human limitations as a gift instead of a frustrating hindrance mm. moving into this year, we'll talk about what that means. And to set that up. I, I, th- I think Pete Scazzaro is, is very important. Um, for, for those who are not aware of Scazzaro, I, I think you should be. He's written many, many books, including one in 2022, his most recent, I think it was, hmm. maybe 23. Maybe it was 2023, maybe it was just last year. Um, it's called The Emotionally Healthy Disciple Maker or emotionally healthy disciple making, something like that. Mm -hmm. Um, He's got a lot of books on the emotional health of a leader. Um, He himself is uh, more, more in the psychological realm, not purely a theologian. Um, But, but a lot of theologians use him because he's just written some really, really positive stuff. Emotionally healthy leader, uh, emotionally healthy. I can't think of the other ones. There's Um, there's like spirituality, spirituality, emotionally healthy, spirituality, the emotionally healthy leader. Yeah. Some good ones. Yeah, and and in The Emotionally Healthy Leader, uh, a direct quote from him, he says, Going beyond our limits is one of the most significant challenges and temptations we face as leaders. Oh, man. That's just, it's like putting putting the golf ball on the tee and and, and we're just ready to tee off and, and get a hole in one, maybe. What do you think, Tyler? Going beyond our limits is one of the most significant challenges and temptations that we face as leaders. Man. Well, in terms of challenges, if you're in a position of leadership and uh, like I often I often feel this, that uh, I'm surrounded by very gifted individuals and I don't always have the leadership capabilities that I would like to be able to lead them effectively. And so you could see that as a challenge, like, okay, I need to rise to the challenge work on my leadership skills, be a better leader, be more intentional, be more thoughtful, be more strategic. But at the same time, there are limitations that I have as a leader, as a, as a person that also need to be taken into account. Um, so that's a temptation then is to try and override those natural or God given limitations that I have, uh, that maybe I shouldn't, maybe there's a reason God gave those to me. I mean, it, it could be possible. Also, I think there's there maybe there's other ways of just having conversations with people from that recognition can can actually move towards better leadership, perhaps. That's true. They just they, in general. Yeah. There are studies that have found that yeah, more um, uh, like uh, self reflective or uh, basically leaders who are aware of their limits um, are actually build build more trust with their team. Um, people who assume or act like they have everything together are not as trustworthy because the, it, they're, it's putting up a front. Everybody knows mm-hmm. this. Yeah. We don't have to, we don't have to go on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, in, in, in this book, in, in, in putting the quote in context for Scazzaro, he's talking about defining ministry success in terms of numerical growth and, and then having a desire to go beyond 
those limits and to ignore ourselves as leaders for the sake of the cause, Mm. um, which we all have felt or currently feel that temptation. And we just simply suggest embracing this season of New Year's to to reflect on that and see, is that appropriate? Uh, or, Or is it more appropriate maybe to embrace some kind of limitation? Um, so instead of setting New Year's resolution, again, we wonder about challenging our own assumptions and maybe maybe even our assumptions about authority and, and power and how we use that in, in these scenarios and reflecting on how we use the same authority and power in the spheres that God has granted us. It's putting it in a different frame and embracing limitations rather than always trying to push forward and break outside of the boundaries, which yes. I love doing. You do love doing that. <laughs> but you, you can't do that unless you do embrace yes. limitations. Like yeah. you can't always say yes. You have to say no to something. So let's, let's we'll move into maybe a biblical text uh, in, in just a moment, but I, I think it's, it's worth pausing to reflect on, on Scazzaro here. Going beyond our limits is one of the most significant challenges and temptations that we face as leaders. And he's talking about that, again, in context of wanting to go beyond for the sake of ministry success. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. What do you think, Tyler? Oh, man. This idea of ministry success, I mean, it's, it's a big one. And we're all thinking setting goals, moving forward. Ooh. It is a big one, especially if, uh, if, you're, if you feel like you have to report to somebody else to prove like me man i have like, to report to this guy sitting across from me, those of you watching on youtube oh sean I, I expect those numbers uh <laughs> by the end of the year no but we are all we're we're all speaking of you know we've been talking about authority this season uh we're all under the authority of someone and and so we we i think naturally want to impress those people or or even just um, show those who uh, are support us or, or on our team are praying for us that that things are happening, things are moving, and that things are moving at a success or at a rate that that we we want <laughs> or we're hoping or we're working towards. It's, it's the worst to I don't know to to get to the end of the year and see not as much growth or success as you had hoped. Um, so that can be a huge temptation to to set big goals uh, and then just push yourself, push yourself to your limits, push yourself over your limits in order to achieve those and actually um, cause a lot of harm in the process. Both, well, like threefold, emotionally, physically, yeah, spiritually, threefold. Like it's 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 embodied and it's an embodied defender. If you don't, <laughs> if you don't slow down. The, the actual effects, um, oh, yeah. who wrote the book, the body keeps the score, th- that kind of an idea. There's multiple others that I could cite. That's just one that most people probably know about um, or have heard of that, that gets at the idea of it could take years for your body to undo what you've done. Absolutely. If you're doing it in the name of push forward, success, goals, and never slowing down to reflect on is what I'm doing the best. <laughs> Um, maybe I'll throw myself out as an example here where it was, uh, sometime in 2023. So last year, mm-hmm. I said that right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Last year. Yeah. Still getting used to the that. current year. Yes. I mean, we lost a few years in COVID, so it's hard to keep track. Uh, COVID. I, I just blame everything on COVID. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, I, 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 I have ideas. I usually have a lot of ideas randomly, you know, like, this could be helpful. This could be helpful. This could be helpful. And you know, there's yes. like six things I can confirm. Yeah. And at one point, which I, I, I sort of knew this, but you basically said, focus your attention. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, you said something different. Um, but I, I get, I, yes, I can't do everything at once. Even if I have my, my brain, it's just more, it's integrative, strategic, and I, I just uh, want to do something about this, 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 everything. And so I'm pushing the boundary. I'm one of those people that we're criticizing. <laughs> and and I have to, I, I learn, like for me, embracing this this idea of limitations is where is the best to focus my attention? Mm-hmm. And there's a whole host of, of 
things that go into that. It's it's not just well, what am I good at? It's 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 usually more what's the most helpful for the team? What's the most helpful for the outcomes uh, that we're looking for? And, and then a part of that is my individual strengths that that can be brought into the better team that others maybe couldn't do as well, can't do whatever that I can lean into and embrace that strength. But within that, I think there's there's still this idea of embracing a limitation of while all things might be helpful, you can't you can't do like no. this isn't as helpful as that. So go do that. Mm-hmm, Fo- mm-hmm. Focusing your attention can be uh, really helpful. Mm-hmm. I'll pause myself there because I could go on a rabbit trail of um, things I'm studying for my PhD. Um, do you do you have a personal example? Maybe 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 what I've said is 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 connecting to some. Yeah, but I, I your 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 personality, your mind works a little bit differently than mine. I'm not one of the you're not one of the people that's always trying to push the boundary. You you do it in a more, I don't know. I'll let you describe so I don't get in trouble. Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> no, I, yeah, I'd be very curious to hear how you would describe me. Yeah, I'm not the one. I'm not one that uh, that pushes pushes the boundaries uh, pushes the boundaries too much. And uh, you selectively push the boundaries. I selectively push the boundaries. I do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, I mean, one limitation that I'm, f- or, or I guess one, uh, w- if we talk about um, going beyond our, our limits, then, uh, you know, I, I lead a team. I'm responsible for, for I mean, right now we're, we're making strategic decisions about the next year. And, and for me, uh, I, I want, um, how do I describe Ministry it? Ministry success. Ministry success. Like, like I want to show, I, basically I want to show, I want people to recognize that what we're doing is meaningful and, and is important. actually and important. And, uh, and so, I mean, very, very, uh, honestly, one of the things that's been the hardest for me in my leadership role has been, uh, networking, like, building relationships with lots of different people and maintaining those relationships so that the ministry can grow. Um, and, and that's, that's been very hard cause I'm not naturally somebody who can, I don't know, walk into a room and make friends with lots of people. And, uh, and one way that I can though push myself beyond my boundaries is to say, well, that's expected of me. And so I'm going to have to do this. I'm going to have to push myself and, and I do want to be successful and I do need to make progress in those areas. But, um, but then I can take a lot of, I can put a lot of burden on myself to be somebody that I'm maybe not. Instead of asking the question, how can I leverage other people around me uh, to accomplish the same the same things? I have a solution for you. Yeah, tell me. I forget the guy who wrote the book, um, but it, it would have been in the uh, millenni- pre-millennial generation. Who is, who is that? Gen, Gen X? Like my parents' generation? Oh, your parents' generation. Prob- I think it's Gen X. Yeah. Um, Malcolm no, no. Malcolm Gladwell, I think. How to win friends and influence people. Oh, yeah. You just have to read the book. Ooh, okay, okay. Get it figured out. I like Malcolm Gladwell. Yeah. Did he write that book? That's not him, no. How to win friends. No, no, no. You're talking... Who, who yeah. did write that? Mm, it's the other guy. Somebody's already fact-checked us. Thank you. Thank you. But those. I do like Malcolm Gladwell. But, yeah, how to win friends and... Ted, is it Covey? I don't know. Uh, okay, somebody, we, somebody we, fact we, check we, us. Somebody, somebody's already looked it up on Google and said it's this. No, but actually, I've listened to. Uh, speaking of of that, uh, it was very helpful. I listened to a podcast uh, for for introvert entrepreneurs, mm-hmm. and that was very helpful when thinking about how do I make progress in this area and still embrace my limitations. You do bring up a point, though, um, Ben Robertson. He he serves with Josiah Venture um, in in the Czech Republic, like like Tyler and I do, and he does a, a strengths finder training for for individuals for teams it's like coaching, and he helped us to see that in, in the midst of our team, there's help me out with the strengths finder. There's there's different categories, mm-hmm. and I can't remember what they are. Strategic, there's strategic, relational, uh, uh, influencing, and one more. And intellectual, yeah, I think there's four, and, and we we all like he put a map together <laughs> and showed the results of our team and and, and everybody it's a higher education. Okay, where are we the weakest? <laughs> That's right, you've guessed it. Welcome to the new year, starting off easy. Relational strengths. No, we, it's the influencing one. The, the influencing. Yeah, I'm yeah, sorry, yeah. not the relational. We had we're, we had we're more good of with, those. Yeah, we're good the, with the, the influencing is related to the relational. Yeah, yeah. Um, 
And and we looked at that, and Ben was like, this seems to be quite obvious that you have a very strong weakness here, but in the relational mm-hmm. and the strategic, you have this and this and this. And if you use that, it actually could help you. And I think we have, and a lot of us like the influencing and, and, and being relational, being the person everybody likes to talk to in the room. Yep. It's like, give me, give me a few people and have more narrow quality conversation. I can't, I can't do the talk to everybody thing. And most of us can't. Um, but, but Ben helped us to see that we can kind of embrace a limitation by using another strength, mm-hmm. which is mm-hmm. kind of, kind of just an interesting other anecdote. Yeah. I, I did find that really helpful. Why don't we, um, because I, I feel like when we get on to Paul here, we're, we're going to introduce, um, did, did Paul set goals, <laughs> um, <laughs> and, and talk through the new Testament before we do that? Let's, let's go into the lightning round. Ah, okay. And I'm excited about some questions I've come up with. So yes, in, in good fun. When time began, did it start with new year's? Obviously, it started with uh, fireworks. Uh, let there be light. Boom. <laughs> uh, and so, yes, New Year's. I'm just having philosophical fun. You're bringing the jokes. That's fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> How do you celebrate New Year's? With fireworks, apparently. Um, so, in the past, uh, we would we would uh, meet up with some other families and go to a cabin up in the mountains uh, that overlooks the whole valley and stay up late and then you see fireworks go off across the whole valley and it's spectacular but this year uh i'll be uh at, in croatia looking out at the ocean nice yeah at midnight uh i'll probably be looking out but i wonder you know will will they be throwing off some fireworks from some boats or will it be quiet i don't know we'll have to see i'm just picturing people lighting fireworks off <laughs> 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 Sounds like a not good idea. Probably not a good idea. Yeah, not advice. Don't do that at home, friends. Okay. Um, for me, I, I suppose I should answer. Yes. We usually just kind of chill, stay at home. It's, it's more of a, a family day. There's some special food that, that more comes from my wife's side of the family oh. that we we do when we're with them. We would kind of modify and, and do it a different way. What special food? Uh, just like uh, hors d'oeuvres, like small... Like finger food? Yeah, I like that. Mm-hmm. With like... like uh, more recently goat cheese mm-hmm. with um like chili jam oh like yeah hot, hot chili jam we we found at uh, a, a a big store that restaurants and other people go to to shop at it's called yeep j-i-p uh fantastic store and they have a chili jam there that's from i think scotland or something i don't know but it's really good and so stuff like that stuff like that speaking of which this podcast is sponsored by yeep the best place to get your chili jam. If, if only. If only. If it worked. We, we should put a Venmo or something <laughs> so you can g- give, give us some money. We can go buy some chili jam. <laughs> um, final question. One thing that you look forward to this year? Uh, very practically, I look forward to moving into our house. Nice. So we've been, we've been uh, working on building a house for three years. So... Hopefully this year, that's the plan is that we should move in. So I'm very much looking forward to that. Nice. Yeah. yeah I think I, I'm looking forward to settling in. We're, we're now a family of five, previously four, and just looking forward to settling in, new rhythms, mm. enjoying some time together. It's going to be fun. Absolutely. I, I I wanted to ask a question about Santa Claus and time travel, but I just figured we wouldn't go there. New Year's themed. Yeah, it's kind of off theme, but uh, you save it for next year. Maybe. Time, if I, if I remember. Travel. Let's go. Let's go into. Um, w- let, let me set up where where you want to take us here with mm-hmm. Paul. I don't know where you're going to start o- officially, um, but a quote from Dallas Liverd in D- Dallas Willard. Uh, I was I was reading ahead to his his uh, his quote his, his title, uh, and and it came together. Whatever Dallas Willard, living in the fullness of Psalm twenty three, <laughs> that that text that he wrote. He says, human desire is infinite by its nature. It cannot be satisfied. You must take your stand against it because you cannot satisfy it. Wow. Again, that notion of embracing limitations. So let's, let's take that into biblical text and, and do some biblical and theological play with the, oh, the Apostle Paul. 
Well, inherent to that quote is the is the is the conviction that um, just because we can doesn't mean we should, <laughs> or just because we think we sh- should doesn't mean that we should. <laughs> um, I mean, uh, so desire is a desire is a, a fickle fickle master. I mean, we, it's it's where the where the first humans went wrong. So they, we, they, we just need to desire the right things. I mean, that's right, James K. Right. Smith. There that's you right. Go. And thank you, St. Augustine. Uh, so we can see really, really well that, um, you know, Paul has a very impressive resume. And he, and he does, he is open about that resume in a couple places. You know, very. Yes. Very. Like, he's kind of the guy, the dude, both in terms of his... Negative and positive. <laughs> negative and... Yeah, exactly. I was a destroyer. No, I'm not. Yeah, like... Coming from the right line, educated in the right way, engaging in the right sorts of activities, all things that would have given him prestige and honor, and he's just a boss. But he also, he sets those things aside. He he recognizes that uh, that he does have some limitations, and he doesn't always act on his, what's the word, his the things that he could do. He sets aside some things that he could do and and could draw on in order to live out of his limitations, which mm-hmm. seems very strange. Why would you, why would he do that? He's he's a boss. Why doesn't he just act like a boss? <laughs> um and we can see that in in this really illustrated well in 1 Corinthians where where basically Paul is uh towing the line is 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 doing a very interesting dance of both defending himself before the Corinthians and also kind of making himself seem smaller. (laughs) Um, And so he, he kind of pushes back against the Corinthians for, for elevating those who um, are boastful, have to see, it seem to have authority, seem to have intelligence. And he says uh, in first Corinthians one, God has chosen what is insignificant and despised in the world, what's viewed as nothing, to bring to nothing what is viewed as something, so that no one may boast in his presence. Um, Let the one who boasts boast in the Lord. And then he talks very personally, and he says, When I came to you, brothers and sisters, announcing the mystery of God to you, I did not come with brilliance of speech or wisdom. I decided to know nothing among you except Jesus Christ, and him crucified. I came to you in weakness, in fear, and in much trembling. My speech and my preaching were not with persuasive words of wisdom, but with a demonstration of the Spirit's power, so that your faith may not be based on human wisdom, but on God's power. And what's interesting about these, the way that Paul talks about himself is that, um, you know, he was, does he, is he eloquent in speech? Can he, can he, can he perform? I, I think so. Yes. Yeah. I mean, there's a, plenty of examples of this in the book of Acts where he's like, again, he's a boss. <laughs> he's a very skilled speaker. Is he is he wise? I mean, people gathered around. So, yes. He's educated. Mm-hmm. He's he he knows his stuff. I mean, he was trained under one of the best best rabbis at the time period, in in the time period, yeah. So he 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 knew his stuff, and and he also knew he had the skills to portray those well, mm-hmm. the rhetoric and the the. He should have, yeah, he those definitely, things, yeah. definitely did. Um, does he have the ability to be strong and confident? We see lots of examples of that, especially before his conversion. You know, like standing up against the Christians and persecuting them. <laughs> It's interesting after after he's saved. Yeah. He still has that same thing. Yeah. It's just that he, I, I think he's he's kind of reining that in and saying it's by the power of the spirit. Where where is the spirit going in these and then going that way? Yeah. So, I, I agree. Yeah. I think so. And so so he's he's substituting all the things that might come naturally to him or because of his background and basically saying I'm not those aren't going to be the things I lead with. Uh, or that's, those aren't the things that I led with when I brought the gospel to you. Um, and the, we can answer, ask the question, why? Why did he not come with brilliance of speech, with wisdom? Why did he come in fear and in trembling and in weakness? 
I think the key is the this. He says in 1 Corinthians 2, 2, I decided to know nothing among you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. It's the it's it's Jesus in his weakness, in his crucifixion, where the power of God is most visible. Um, so he's highlighting this Jesus who who laid down his life, who who did not um, count equality something with God something to be grasped, but emptied himself and made him, made himself into a servant. Philippians two, and in that moment of weakness is when the power of God is most visible and where the Spirit is actually accomplishing some incredible things. So by by essentially embracing his own weaknesses and his limitations, and by reining back the things that would come naturally to him, he's creating space for for Jesus to be more visible. What do you think? I was just thinking a very, very vivid personal example of when I was uh, still in the Chicagoland area. And I I would wake up pre when I had symptoms developing of what I now know as fibromyalgia, chronic pain disorder. I've talked about it in previous season before. Um, I, I, I would have to wake up in the morning I would be exhausted, and, and I had this thing where it's not typical for fibromyalgia people, uh, patients, whatever, but I, I would, my body gets so exhausted, even if it's, like, not actually, that I, I would just fall down. My legs would just give out. Um, I, I would wake up and go, God, I can't. And and it's as if he would speak back and say, okay, I will. <laughs> because I would go to work. And do what was necessary. We mm. were support raising to come here to the Czech Republic at the time with yes. JB. Yes, and I was, uh, every day is I, I I can't. I don't. I I I I don't have the strength to. And she was like, okay. I'll, I'll I'll be with you. I'm carrying you. I will. Um, and then I would get home and I would I would just physically collapse because I was just had had done you know well all day and and yeah. Um, but that, that example came to mind of mm. like, that's what Paul's doing when he is taking that example of Jesus and emptying himself in, in many, many ways. He's saying in some instance, my, my, my brain systematizes things. Um, maybe there's two things. One mm. instance where he's like, more like what I was saying, like, I, I can't do this in, in my own power. It's not possible. I, I need your help. And, and he relies on the spirit that way. Uh, in his weakness, Christ has proclaimed loudly mm-hmm. and maybe there's also other ways where he's like i could but i don't think it's the most wise because i don't know all of the surrounding factors mm. so even though i maybe i could spirit please yes so maybe both yeah of those that, that, that's helpful so maybe maybe one way to think about resolutions heading into the, to the new year is do we need do you listener need to go in with more of the attitude of I can't, you, you know, if maybe you recognize the fact that you have significant weak limitations mm-hmm. and, um, and maybe they, they trouble you. Maybe they're frustrating. Um, it's a great invitation to say, I can't, but God, you will, or ask, will you <laughs> mm-hmm. and hear him say, yes, I will. Um, or, uh, you might, uh, feel very confident and very competent, um, and it might be more appropriate to, to step in the new year by saying, uh, I could, but is it, is that the most helpful? Um, uh, maybe a, a posture of humility and servant heartedness, emptying yourself is what's more appropriate heading into the new year rather than just, just like hardcore going for it and, and, you know, putting all you have into this next stretch um checking in with the spirit and asking what what is needed of this particular season and that's where i was that's where i was thinking is a season like we, we have a tendency in this new year's time to think the whole year we lump the whole thing together and i just don't know if that's helpful especially in this like maybe for for those of you listening watching you're thinking that's oh, one or the other like i have significant weakness mm. and that's okay mm. In this season, it's just, it's just a season. This will pass. This is I, I need to start here. That might change later this year, or maybe you're saying I know I, I can do this, but maybe I think a little bit. Um, who who knows what reasons? 
Um, but I'm gonna I'm going to say no, spirit. I I think I can, but I need your help still. Yeah, yeah. And allowing him to to move in and through us and see what he does in terms of how how others are affected, uh, how we lead them, how they're led by us. Um, and maybe you start there, and then later something happens, and you go, oh, I can't. And then you can hear God say, I I will. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, but seeing it in terms of a season or maybe breaking it up into at least like uh, quarters, Mm -hmm. like once every three months, just pausing and saying, Father, help me to see where I'm trying to do this push forward thing in my own power. Spirit, spirit, uh, uh, enliven me. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Yeah. That I might move forward more appropriately and more with your presence. I don't want to deny your presence. I want to invite your presence with me. I know what's already here, but I want you to, to your presence to move through me. Yeah. Yeah. Mm, I like that. I'm taking, I'm taking that into the new year for sure. Do we, do we want to move to to quickly to first Corinthians nine? Yeah. Maybe there's, there's one verse here, the whole chapter. Um, it comes after chapter eight where the food offered to idols, which would be very interesting to talk about at some point. Uh, Cause there's a lot of really contextualized nuanced features of this. Um, but in, in chapter nine, Paul surrenders his rights. He starts off. Am I not free? <laughs> Am I not an apostle? The answers are uh, yes, uh, because yes. of the, <laughs> the way the conditional works in Greek language, but you don't even need it because conventions, it's just obvious. Yeah. It's a, He's, it's, you can recognize it as a rhetorical question with a positive answer. <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. Uh, in verse 12, I think it's 12. My, my font is small here. Yeah. 12, like 12 B. Nevertheless, we have not made use of this right, but we endure anything rather than put an obstacle in the way of the gospel of Christ. Hmm. And so moving forward, Paul is saying, means embracing uh, a type of limitation. It's kind of like putting a, a limitation on ourselves. Mm-hmm. It's not just re- embracing a natural limitation, but it's actually receiving a, a limitation or, uh, or, or saying, yeah, like imposing upon yourself a limitation in order to accomplish something greater. Mm-hmm. So let me ask you, in light of First Corinthians nine, mm-hmm. we were talking about this previous uh, before we before we filmed. Uh, how do I want to word it though? What, uh, the question is, with with First Corinthians in mind, does Paul have goals? Oh yeah. Oh, we did talk about this coming in. Uh, it's a it's a tricky one. I think uh, we we do see some examples of Paul setting goals or at least having desires. Mm -hmm. Um, So uh, what comes to mind, for example, is when Paul says that he desires to go to Spain. And so he's like, hey, you should support me. I want to go to take the gospel to Spain. So go to Madrid, Barcelona. Seriously. uh, Did he make it to Spain? No, he didn't make it to Spain. Uh, And there, so there are lots of things I think he sets his heart, sets his mind on. Another example that comes to mind is when he, when he um, when he receives the Macedonian call, he's trying to get into Asia, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, and and he can't. So he's he he wants he really wants something. He sets he's set his goal, and the spirit doesn't allow it, which is a really interesting uh, text to 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 look at because it says the spirit kept him from doing so. So. I think he, he's he sets some goals, but he's also very responsive to to the spirit leading, and uh, does not hold those goals too tightly for the at the expense of being in tune with the spirit in the moment and for every step. I think, and so uh, I think, yeah, I don't think he set goals in terms of like, okay, here's my here's my ten year strategy. Here's the here's the the fruit that I'd like to see. Um, here's the lives that I want to see changed. Here's how many churches I want to see planted. I think he's just doing the next thing and and doing trying to do it as faithfully as possible, but taking his leading from from the Spirit. Um, and that is what I mean. If you look at church history, 
the 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 story of the growth of the church in general is that they did not there's nothing that suggests they started out with a master strategy for okay here's how we're going to make Christianity the master religion of, of the <laughs> master plan of evangelism the it's religion book, of the holy the roman empire by 300 they were they were f- being faithful to god in everyday sorts of ways and and god honored that and multiplied that and um gave them favor with people and it's the spirit that opened up new new mm. new ways and so there's a tension here you know for us do we do we is it good to set a 10 year goal yeah uh it helps us to think outside of our boxes and imagine what could be um and organize getting there and organize getting there and know what to prioritize but but that's not the the, the goal or the 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 vision or the the strategy that's not the ultimate, um, the ultimate is being, being responsive to the spirit. And also, as we've seen, being aware of our limitations. Yeah. I think this goes back to when I was, when I was on with Landon talking about authority and we just kept coming back to embracing humility, Mm. like like the humility of Christ, Philippians two, that's the, the, the point. Um, and I think bringing that here, it's, it's, what in terms of thinking of, of uh, resolutions and counter resolutions, embracing limits, setting goals, what's there is a tension. We're, we're saying, yeah, both. Um, but I, I think to cut to the heart of it, the question maybe is where do I sacrifice? Because if we answer wrongly and we push forward the goals, what, what, what's the cost? We're sacrificing the presence of God through the Spirit moving through us. Hmm. Other people are affected by that too. But if we if we sacrifice rightly and, and embrace the limitations while moving forward, then then maybe we actually are bringing with us more of the power of the Spirit, the power of God's presence. Hmm. Perhaps I don't know. Just just I'm thinking I'm thinking on the spot. I like that a lot. I think that's that's a really insightful thing to to observe that in any decisions, in any strategy, in any goals, we are sacrificing something, and so we we need to not only you know set our set our mind on what could be, but also recognize what we will sacrifice in the process of getting there, and is that sacrifice worth it? And is that sacrifice actually going to help me achieve what I what I want to see? We see Paul sacrificing some things that mm, seem kind of counterintuitive, but actually help him accomplish <laughs> what he ultimately mm-hmm. wants, uh, and that's for people to to see Jesus uh, and recognize his power in his weakness. And um, so, yeah, what are we sacrificing? That's a re- really good question to leave our listeners with. Maybe. <laughs> um, I think it could lead to some some reflection. Um, and I think where we're ultimately landing, we could say much more, of course. Um, set set New Year's goals. Set, set goals. That's important. But maybe make one of those goals embrace my limits. Now that's kind of as I'm reflecting. That's that's kind of where I'm at this year. Like mm. I, I've been working on that the last I don't know year and a half maybe. Of, I mean, in many ways, it seems like we're doing more than ever within like the work that we're doing, our team, what we're tasked with. Uh, and, and and the more those things happen, the more that gets piled up in the work to do list. The yes. more I'm focusing on the output of sacrificing rightly. <clears throat> not um, sacrificing everything, family suffering, other things, my own spiritual life, as Kazera would say, because I've got to get these, you know, this pile cleared. Um, and so the more I'm more, the more work I think really for both of us, with our, our emphasis on slow and these kinds of things, it's, it's quite yeah, obvious coming yeah. out uh, previous seasons talking about rest and, and moving more slowly and reflectively. Um, is is key to making sure that in in a, in one sense we stay within our limits. I don't think we should always operate within our limits because if we do, then we're comfortable and God can't use us because we're not pushing the boundary. That's not what we're talking about. With 
in some of these other areas where it's like un unhealthy moving things forward, just adding a resolution or counter resolution of embrace limits. God, where should I embrace my limits this year? Absolutely. And maybe you'll have, uh, pointing at you, those of you who are watching on YouTube, uh, and, and uh, figuratively pointing at you, <laughs> those listening, <laughs> you might have questions about what this looks like. Mm. Or, or maybe even from now, you've got a little bit of time until our first Q&A of the season. Of the season. Of indeed, the season. Indeed. We will have, I think, two, probably. And the first one will be in February, the middle of February. Uh, it will air in the middle of February, so we can get your questions submitted to us. Oh, by yeah, by the end of January. By the end of January is 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 totally fine. We want we want to represent as many of you as possible with your questions. So please write to us in any way possible. In, yes, yes, you can write to us at praxology at formation org uk. You can also uh, write to us through our Instagram, mm -hmm. formation underscore eu or at formation underscore EU. Um, and Facebook, if you're... You know, comment on YouTube as well. Um, so there's lots of, lots of ways. So please do. We, we want to hear your questions. We want, we, again, we, we, we love uh, for this to be in dialogue with you, not just talking at you and you maybe hopefully learning some things uh, or, or having some inquisitive thoughts. But we want, we want to be in dialogue and, and talking with, with where we're growing and, and sharpening one another. Absolutely. Uh, so that we can have a greater missional toolkit for success and in, 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 into, into this new year, I think. Uh, so with that, we say go and celebrate the new year. Think deeply, even, even biblically and theologically about mm. setting some new goals. And maybe we'll, we'll learn from Paul, I think implicitly where when to, to push forward and maybe when to set that third goal of three of embracing my limits for the year. Mm. With that, we say go in peace and we'll see you next time. See you next time. <laughs>